So over the last 10 years, we've seen incomes at the bottom of the distribution really be very stagnant. You know, poor families have watched their incomes basically be flatline over the last 10 years or even fall. But at that same time, housing costs have soared. Between 1995 and today, the median rent in the United States has increased by over 70%. Utilities have skyrocketed too. And during the years where more and more low-income families were in need of more assistance, fewer and fewer were receiving it. So I think most Americans think that the typical low-income family lives in public housing or benefits from government assistance for housing, but the opposite is true. Only about one in four families that qualify for any kind of assistance receive it with respect to housing, which would be unthinkable with other basic needs like food. Uh, and in some of our largest cities, the waiting list for public housing isn't counted in years, it's counted in decades. So if you're like a single parent and you apply for public housing in Washington, D.C., you might be a grandparent by the time your application is renewed. And those three factors, stagnant incomes, rising housing costs, and the failure of the federal government to bridge the gap has created a situation where eviction, which used to be rare in America and draw crowds, has become, frankly, commonplace in some of our poorest areas. In London, I'm familiar with areas where you'll have a council state next to an affluent area of expensive housing. Is that going to change? Are we going to see more segregation along class and race in this country? And how worried are you about that, Owen, first? Undoubtedly. I mean, London's been quite different uh, traditionally to, say, Paris, where you'll get the affluent living in the middle, and then you have the so-called bonlieu, the suburbs, where uh, poorer people are, are segregated and, and ghettoized with pretty disastrous consequences, um, which we've seen. And, and London's uh, been better, at, better in terms of mixing people from different backgrounds. We do have segregation partly in terms of race nowhere near on the scale of the United States, uh, because London has amongst the highest level of mixed race relationships on earth. Mm. So th there is that mixing taking place. Uh, and, and if you go to places like Hackney and, and Tower Hamlets and Newham, you get people from different communities who still, who still very much live and work together and, and go to school together and have families together. Um, but undoubtedly, in the last few years, because of uh, cuts to housing benefit, to social security, uh, because of the failure to build uh, council housing, because now it's becoming so residualised, uh, increasingly turned into a temporary transit camp, basically for those in the most problematic circumstances, because of rents which are unaffordable uh, and increasing. Uh, we've seen a, huge, a quite a dramatic and growing shift of lower income people from, those, uh, from inner London to not just outer London, but increasingly dispersed across the country as well. And that's frightening, of course it is, because I think we, you know, I'm not gonna glamorize it. People can live in the same community and live parallel lives. They might live around the corner. It doesn't mean they're necessarily mixing together in the way people might like. But nonetheless, there's no question, you know, you're ending up with a situation where you're going to have cleaners coming in on night buses to clean the homes of people who, you know, maybe earn in a, in a, in a day what they might earn in a year. And, and they're being driven, you know, they have to go night bus 4 a.m. in the morning, l living far away from, from where they work. It's a, it's a terrible, you know, where inner London will become playground for the affluent and for the rich. And, uh, and that's going to get far worse because of everything from the new policies on, on housing, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, basically abolishing uh, for council housing as we know it, in terms of flogging off uh, local, uh, sorry, in terms of housing association um, housing, flogging off so-called, uh, you know, using expensive so-called council housing uh, to flog that off and, 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 and you'll, you'll end up breaking up those mixed communities even further. I think, uh, mm. I, I wouldn't disagree with any of that. I think, and just by the way, if you ever move to Britain and want a job, shelter's your place. I think the other story, which is absolutely, is this isn't just a story about London. If we go up, uh, if you, you know, ever make it back up North Home, uh, you know, you, 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 they are really sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who said, I know, I know, I, was, I, saw, I follow you on Twitter. I see you fight, fight, fighting people all the time. But what I, the point is, is, this is a failure of economic policy in Britain that goes back decades. We have a... Uh, loads and loads of jobs uh, and no houses in some places and no jobs and loads of houses in other places uh, and that is a huge and it's a, a huge problem we have uh, and so building a couple of fast link railways isn't going to be the thing that solves that problem and it's a start in trying to get things getting people around the country better but london become is becoming and boris johnson even went up to scotland and said he wanted you know edinburgh to be effectively an economic suburb of london london should be the mega city which kind of draws in all the things if you allow that to happen then this situation will get worse. 
the, my example, which is a kind of is a true one, in we don't lack land or places to build. In Surrey, there is more land used uh, for golf courses than there is for human habitation. Hmm. Uh, we have choices in public policy. We have choices to make, and the, what is happening. And the other th side of this story is that ghettoisation and, and, and is happening, but it's happening in an incredibly awful way, which is now in London particularly. You can be told, if you present as homeless, and this happens regularly, you can be told, yes, we can give you a home, but you have to go to Birmingham, or you have to go to Yarmouth, or you have to go, you, we can go for your home, but we're not going to offer you a home in London, in the place where you grew up, where your family is, maybe where your children are at school, and where you might have a prospect of a job. So we are now got public policy which drives people away, and the political response to that, particularly from the right, is that, well, uh, you know, my children can't afford to live in London or, you know, that, that's what happens. The city's being successful. We cannot allow that to become the public policy of choice. We have to fight for mixed communities, for economics that actually drives people together, because otherwise we will end up with Milwaukee's uh, or even more Milwaukee's and London. London is just different, uh, but it's a, a, an exaggerated microcosm of what's happening around the country.